These are the 1960s um, alligator skins I repaired on film last week. Um, for those of you who didn't see it, um, this, um, this, this skin had quite a, a severe tear across here. It was, it was a good sort of uh, 30, 30 millimetres long. You could get your finger right inside. What I've done, um, I've, I've carefully eased a chamois leather patch through the hole and with, with various implements I've lain it flat and I've managed to get glue through and and you know make a reasonable job of the repair you can still see it at the moment this skin hasn't been you can see you can see the scar there but um, if I take the uh, take the tree out you can see it's it's all flexible you can't you can't feel it and what I'm going to be doing in this film these skins are desperate to be moisturized they haven't been moisturized in but it's possible they've never been moisturized um, so they're extremely dry and that's one of the reasons they would have cracked. Once these have been moisturised, buffed and coloured, um, that, that tear and that scar will not be seen. You know, it'll blend in with all of the rest of the... Because um, uh, alligator skin, obviously, it has wrinkles and it's, it, it, it's not a smooth skin, so this, this is relatively minor. The other shoe was the same. Um, if I bring it closer to the lens, where was it? It was, it was here. The tear was across there. Um, but in the same way, um, once these have been moisturised and buffed, um, that would be, be very difficult to identify. Um, the skins very well might, they very well might tear elsewhere, but they will not tear again here. That repair I've done will be extremely strong. It'll be permanent. You can't feel the patch. You, I'm pressing quite hard. No, you can't feel it, and you certainly won't be able to see it. It'll be pretty invisible. Um, but what I want to show you today um, is moisturising alligator skin. Um, there is a slight problem with the, uh, you can see it's lighter here, I've given it a quick sand. There's, there's, there's a bit of a problem with the stitching. The stitching's starting to fail and the welting itself is separating, but I'll deal with that over the next couple of days. I want to get some moisturiser on these skins. It's not a quick job. It does take a few days to soak in. You have to keep applying and applying. And as I'm applying layers, in thin layers, I'll deal with this, um, this damage here. So the first thing, I just need to protect myself slightly. I've got an old towel here and uh, pop on a pair of uh, pair of gloves. I don't really want the, um, the, the moisturiser, it won't do me any harm, but it is coloured. The moisturiser is coloured and it will stain my skin. Um, these shoes were covered in, um, they were covered in polish. I think it was just simple black boot polish. Um, pretty much the last thing you should use on exotic skins. Um, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't, I'll, I'll, I will come to that later. I just want to show you how to apply. Now, this is a, um, I'm not going to be using this cream. This is a, um, uh, it's actually, it's got a rag inside there. Yeah, I use that rag for reapplying. It's, it's, it's quite a generous pot of leather cream. It is, there's various creams like this. I, 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 um, I use this occasion, I've got two or three. Um, this is if the skins were very, very, very dry and they were rather large. Say, for instance, if it was a, um, a, a suitcase or a briefcase or something, um, what I'm actually going to use today is this small pot of, of coloured cream. This is, it'll be a similar consistency, um, similar um, components, but that one's actually got dye pigments within it. And it's the dye pigments I need, really, as much as the... Um, as much as the, uh, the, the, the moisturising elements. So I've got an old rag. Now, it's very important with, um, with alligator and crocodile that you don't over apply. Um, what you find between the scales, uh, let's have a look, look at the wrinkly bits between the scales, they're more absorbent than the flatter, shinier scale surfaces themselves. So I've just got a little tiny bit of the cream on the rag and I'm going to start on the bit that I know has been repaired. And you have to, you have to really sort of stir it in and um, get it down into the welt stitching as well. That's quite dry. It's lost its colour. So it's just a case of taking tiny bits of the cream and um, stir, st stirring, stirring it in. Um, it's, it's easy enough, very easy. Um, there's nothing, uh, nothing magical about this process. Now, there are various creams and lotions and potions out there that do actually leave alligators and crocodile dull, matte and listless. Um, they're too oily, they're too greasy. Um, one or two people recommend using mink oil on exotic skins. In my opinion, it's probably the last thing you should use. It's very oily, it will moisturise the skin, it will help to prevent it from cracking, but it never really fully dries. It will leave, um, leave a greasy film, a greasy surface, and um, you can't you can't buff the skin afterwards to a nice sheen. Um, uh, you don't get the lovely sort of luster that you would normally get from an exotic, like an alligator or a crocodile. So this is actually absorbing quite a lot of cream, which is no surprise. I put it on in very, very small amounts. 
Um, I keep stirring, keep stirring. I'll do the whole skin all over. I don't, you don't need to see me do the whole skin. It's a tedious process, but you see, it's, it's just an old, an old cotton cloth. I think this is an old bed sheet, actually. You can see all the different colors where I um, have specific areas of the rag for specific colors. Um, and go back to the area I've already done. This is the area that I know had cracked. So it doesn't go, uh, it doesn't go on evenly with, um, with exotics. Um, what you find with, with crocodile and alligator in particular, the areas between the scales, they're sort of its wrinkly skin, that absorbs the, um, it absorbs the creams rather more readily than the actual surface of the scale itself, which is slightly more shiny and a bit more resistant. And um, if you, you, there's no shortcut to this, you've got to apply in thin layers. So I'm, I'm applying this whilst it still seems to be absorbing. I'm just can put two or three, maybe four or five, very thin, very thin layers on the uh, on the skin, and um, just keep working it, keep rubbing it, and then eventually you'll you'll feel it stays slightly tacky. Um, it, it needs a few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, or even an hour or so to slowly absorb. Um, at that point, what I do, I take I take an old brush. Um, it's just a shoe brush. It's very clean. I've washed that with shampoo and dried it with a hairdryer. And I use the, st the stipples of the brush to, to sort of really work, really work the cream into the cracks and the crevices. It's a very cracked and creased skin, um, naturally. You know, they're not smooth, so you really have to, you have to really work it in. Um, what I was saying that different areas of the skin, they absorb the cream at different, different rates. Between the scales, it will absorb very quickly certain properties within, within the cream. What you find, if you, if you try to be lazy and think, well, that's easy, I will, I'll just put a real thick, spread it on like butter and leave it overnight and allow that to soak in and, you know, one real heavy dose will, will do the trick. It doesn't. It makes a real mess. You'll end up with a, uh, like a sticky residue like chewing gum. Um, it's quite dreadful and you will end up removing the whole lot with a solvent. Um, what you, you, you have, as, as you've just seen me, you have to use the cloth, you're stirring very fine, fine amounts, keep rubbing until you know it's gone in before you apply more, keep rubbing and then, and then when you intended to leave it for a while, use the stipply brush, it's just, um, it's an old hog hair brush, it's, it is a shoe brush, just to, just to stab it and stir it and make sure that there's no residue on the surface of the skin, you can't leave a residue on the surface of the skin and, and expect it to absorb even, evenly. This nature skin absorbs erratically. It will absorb certain properties within the uh, creams very quickly and readily, and certain properties are more difficult to absorb. And those are the, 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 the elements and the properties that get left behind on the surface. The ones that the skin uh, it, it absorbs evenly will go e easily, I beg your pardon, will go in quickly, and it will leave the stickier residue on the surface. Now, obviously, if you keep agitating it as I'm doing, keep rubbing, keep agitating, and um, as I, just keep forcing it to accept, force it to accept the product. Now, all of the inside of this shoe will be moisturised as well. It's only skin, and it is actually quite. That's just calf skin. Now, that will. It's much more straightforward. It's just a few. Um, yeah, just uh, as you would any other leather. You don't need any particular agitation to get it to absorb evenly. That will absorb evenly. And I'll, I'll, I'll have to take my jacket off because I don't want to be getting it all over my jacket, but I will work my hand right inside. I'll use, what colour is that? Yeah, that's black. And then on the, on, the, on the soles down there, that's cream or tan. I'll use a different cream. It's only leather. And on many shoes, I, I even absorb, you know, I, I moisturise the, um, the soles. These, need, these do need a bit, of, it's only skin and it tends to crack there. Um, these do need moisturising, but they also need a little bit of work. And I'm going to be working on the soles and the welting over the next day or so. Um, whilst I'm, I'm, I'm keep applying. So it's just, I can't stress it off. It is a, um, it's a, it's a slow process. You have to keep applying in small, fine layers. Don't be tempted to be lazy and apply it like butter on your toast and expect it to absorb. It will not. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop here because I'm trying to keep these videos fairly short, but it's, it's, this is the process. And I also tend to do the edge of the welting. Um, I, I've, got to do, I've got to do a bit of work to the, to the welting. So I will sand just with diff different grades, take all the, the old bits of polish off. And then I'll just use cream on the edge of the welting, just only skin, um, to make sure that's nice and moisturized. Um, yeah. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep this uh, keep this short and stop here. Um, one or two people sort of get a bit impatient and send me personal messages. Please get the next episode, ne the next instalment up. Um, 
Uh, it's been something in the region of a week since I've had, had the time to, to put this moisturiser on these skins. They've been ready. I've just not had the time to make the film. My sort of work, business and travel commitments outside of fiddling with shoes are in the region of 120 hours a week. So it can be difficult to make the time, but I do. I, I, it is something I, I want to continue with. So do be patient. Um, try not to uh, try to think that I've given up. I'm just, I'm just working or, or travelling. So let's just give that a... Uh, Give that another brush and these will be these will be left probably for about an hour then I'll come back and I'll give them exactly the same and I'll just keep reapplying from that part um, keep reapplying and uh, eventually eventually they'll just stop they'll just stop applying they'll, they'll stop absorbing um, it kind of remains slightly tacky now, that might take a few days it might take even longer it might take a few weeks but eventually these skins will stop absorbing and then I'll use the brush and I'll, I'll, I'll buff and buff and buff, give it, a, give it the best buffing I can with the dry. Then I'll use a piece of very soft, fine cotton and I'll buff again. You do not finish with um, a regular boot polish. It's not something you do on, a, on an exotic skin.